shop update video. I'm making this experimental jig that I won't know if it works until I build it and test it. So it got a little bit complicated, but I bought these new bumpers. These are the inch and three quarter low profile, but we had a slight vulcanization issue where the material tends to rise like a loaf of bread after it comes out of the mold so it doesn't really sit flat on the board so i'm trying to figure out a way to flatten these without having to do each one by hand my idea was to build this jig to utilize the static pressure of my dust collection system as a clamping device to secure them in place and then i'll use a router to take out the high spots so that was my idea i hope it works but if you're watching this video that means it did work and now you can buy this product and uh anyways i bought some tools got got tooled up here from grizzly got a drill on ebay just want to go over some stuff i got because i, I think some of these are very useful for wood shops and uh I use these DeWalt 12 fold drills a lot. This is my third one. I've got two over here. And these are great drills, very lightweight and good capacity for cabinet making, furniture making. I have the 18 volt Makita, which is a great drill too, but it's overpowered for most of the stuff I do. It's nice to have a, a powerful drill when you need it, but I like the 12 volt drills because they they work really great and the batteries lasted a good long time. I've had those for almost 10 years now and the batteries were getting kind of weak. So why not just buy the whole combo pack that comes with two fresh batteries, a new drill, and this really unique tool, which is a one handed reciprocating saw. And it has a, a, an adjustment like that so you can use it in different positions which is cool i have this tree pruning blade on it now so i don't use these a lot for woodworking in the shop but it's very useful to have around the shop for yard work in the home for just mis miscellaneous cutting i have this corded version of the one-handed reciprocating saw and it's one of my favorite tools and it wasn't very expensive. I don't know if they still make them at Home Depot, but um, it's a really great tool. And there's really no way you can use a full-size reciprocating saw with one hand. But when it's time to do demo work, it's good to have a saw like that. But I really like this very lightweight 12-volt one. It's amazing what this saw blade can do. I actually strung this one up on a pole and I was using it as a pole saw which worked really great and it probably wasn't really great for the tool but actually I do use this type of saw quite a bit in the wood shop but not for cutting wood. I have a metal blade on it here and this tool effectively replaces everything that I would need to cut by hand with the hacksaw so cutting piano hinges or black iron pipe for example i would use this tool and the metal cutting blade really doesn't work very well on a standard full-size reciprocating saw because there's a rocking motion this type of tool just goes in and out and it doesn't vibrate quite as much so the rocking motion helps with woodworking to cut aggressively for demo work, but it's, it's really a different type of reciprocating saw. I don't really like working with metal, but when I do, I uh, always use the saw. So here's some other stuff I got from Grizzly. I got these uh, new spring clamps. I really like these. They're very lightweight, strong. This one has four inch capacity. And they're not very expensive, so I'll probably be buying more of these next time I stock up on something. And uh, I really like this router bit. I just bought another one of these. It's very unique. It's got the double bearing for pattern 
cutting work. And so this is another cheap bit. It's got this skinny little pilot bearing, but the double pilot bearing really is the way to go. I do a lot of work with softwoods where a skinny bearing like this leaves an indentation. And for pattern work with jigs, we're using the same pattern over and over hundreds of times. The more bearing surface you have, the better. So the double pilot bearing trim bit is a really great bit to have. I think it's like 14 bucks or so, and uh, I just bought two. So good to know, good to have, as well as these extra long drill bits. These are aircraft length, six inch drill bits, which are, is really handy for drilling pilot holes in hard to reach areas, which I commonly have to do. So that's, that's something that's good to have and a hard to find item. These are the good pilot hole and countersink bits made by Itsy Bit. Expensive, but once you own a set, it's, uh, it's good. So that's what I got from Grizzly. And uh, I wanted to show you these drills. It, uh, this is one of my favorite tools. This one I've had, I think, since I've had this shop. So this is like over 10 years and it's still going good. It's the 7.2 volt skill. This one is model 2362. And this is the one I just bought on eBay. This is 2364. And you can get a drill like this nowadays, the uh, compact versions, but they're, they're all really expensive and overpowered. And this is just a really well put together tool that's worked a really long time for me. And it doesn't have a lot of power, but uh, it's really great for electrical work in particular, which I do a lot of here at the wood shop. I'm actually doing some right now. I've got my electrical box in place to run some new circuits. Replace some, I gotta replace shop lighting pretty soon. So I always use this tool for electrical work and also installing the tiny screws on cutting board feet. So I use this drill a lot and it works great. It's just put together well and you just would never associate this brand with something that works really great and lasts a long time. This model actually has a, a high speed version, two speeds on it. But this this one is just one speed. What's funny is it's, it's got this little gas light thing. When it's charged, it has a green light. And when it gets weak, it shows a red light. But I just thought that gas pump image was, was funny on a power tool. Um, but if you can find one of these on eBay, uh, this one has the drill truck and two speeds. 7.2 volt and obviously it's a good battery because they, they last a really long time so my recommendation about cordless drills is to use the one that has the appropriate power ratio for what you're doing not to use a overpowered drill it's less efficient and more work and these these drills actually were cheap at the time they they sold in like the 40 to 50 dollar range new so they weren't even expensive tools at the time it's just amazing that they can last this long and be good so anyways oh and here's that gear clamp again they still have them at grizzly great for pocket hole joinery very fast and these are on sale uh, i recommend getting a couple of those just for pocket holes so that's what i got at grizzly and now i will continue with making my jig and uh I'll start from the beginning. Yeah.